this is a very Hi. special day <laughs> mm. <laughs> because it's not Tuesday. It is the weekend and we are coming in hot with a very special episode where we're going to talk about this bad boy. But this one behind me and behind Katie. Actually, this this technically isn't the correct Loki. This, but we'll, we'll... Yeah, but it's we're going to roll with it and it's fine. Uh, Sorry, there's a f- massive fly that's just come into my room and decided to how, hang out on my... How dare he? Are you, are you going to be a pain in the ass fly? It's sitting on my monitor. Ah. Why? Why? Right, we're just gonna have to work I, around this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can, I can hear the fly. Is it fra- 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 fly? It's now? huge. It's gone. It's gone behind the screen now. But it was, it was, it was a big fly. Okay, okay. I've got both my windows open, so you know, nature is just gonna kind of want to come in. Fair, fair. You need um, what is it called? The net for your windows. Then. Yeah, and I didn't close. This is, this is the thing. They usually close that blind. Yes. But specifically because um, it stops this sort of vague glare that you might be able to see coming in. And I didn't do it today. Maybe I should have. It's okay. We like flies. They are our friends sometimes. No, they're not. They are annoying. Uh... (laughs) I'm sure flies have a very, like, some kind of purpose, but, like... We don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. No. Uh, But anyway, um, before we get into (laughs) our our Loki talk, uh, first of all, I have to share this. And, and do then, I not want to uh, introduce the, the the show first, and then you want to go into sharing stuff? That's that's a good plan. I will do that first. Hi okay. everyone, <laughs> welcome to this bonus episode of to all the films we judge before. I actually almost fucked up the title of our own fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Katie, <laughs> and that there is the. She's got a holy light on her today. I it's Lily Kay. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I'm, I don't. Know. It might be a sign. I don't know, it's, it's the heavens, they're blessing you. Oh. Chris Evans? <laughs> the heavens! Oh. <laughs> heavens! Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Just bringing my hopes up. It's, anyway. <laughs> heavens. Evans? Anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly, because you guys may or may not get to see a very different looking Lily on oh right on tuesday it's a may or may not situation because suddenly i like my hair <laughs> it does look good today i will say that it, right i'm like looking at it and i'm like hmm yeah it's always the way it's like oh today it's, i like it's, you <laughs> it's just before you get that like big haircut and you're like actually my hair looks really good today maybe i won't do that and then like two days later it goes back to being like not listening to you and you go this is why i was gonna get a haircut yeah yeah, so I'm I'm a bit hesitant at the moment mm. if I should if I should still do it, but I think I will. Do it. Uh, still do it. Uh, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I have I have my doubts at the moment because today we are looking good. I I like this today. It's good. But uh, also looking healthy, shiny. Yeah. Above. Yeah. Uh, but uh, also, I am on a new heart medication, so I know that <laughs> the hair flowing thing is gonna happen again so that's why the the new choice is is just a bit better uh, for that situation so i think i will roll with it so on tuesday be prepared i will look very different from what you see now and so i'm saying katie knows katie is yeah, the only one who knows <laughs> it's, I re- it's gonna look good and it's a it's a haircut that you've had before isn't it like i had very close similar enough once yes yes that this is gonna be a bit different yeah, you're gonna see now I'm now I'm excited again. Okay, that's all I wanted to discuss. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing. Because we know this is a hair podcast. It is. It is. We we are always ending up talking about hair, but it's it's fine. Um, you did something. I truly, did. Truly I did. amazing. I almost so, cried. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I had a bit of a. I had a. I, I had a day yesterday. It was just it's just one of those days where my brain was a bit like. You know, mm. you can't. People who are listening, I'm making a face. It was very sort of like mm. these, and <laughs> just sort yes. of like. Ah! <laughs> and I, um, I went to bed last night, and I was like, I'm going to watch a film. And you know what? I'm going to finally do it. So I watched Train to Busan. I just don't one of them. You know, I, I'm not even kidding. It's one of the main reasons I brought this PlayStation up here after I, um, uh, after I got my playstation 5 which now lives downstairs uh, i was like well now I, if i have this up here i can watch m- uh, the very few blu-rays that i have on it um mm-hmm. which one of which is the one that you gave me yes. um 
which is of Train to Busan. And you know what? I didn't. I wasn't expecting anything otherwise. I liked it a lot. It was very good. <laughs> like it was really good. <laughs> I have this little cushion. Yes. Um, it's kind of uh, it's very sort of soft it's and it's soft... sort of like beans. Yes, like, and it's called a kushti. Yes. Um, uh, and they're great for um. It it is the thing I I I and the entire time was just sort of like kneading it like a cat like. Mm-hmm. getting all my attention out because it's 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 so helpful for that sort of thing i'm just like <laughs> and i was in bed and i was like i was lying down but there were a couple of points where i found myself sitting up a bit more just like mm, no yes <laughs> wait, wait where are all my thoughts that i sent they sent you last because i sent it was midnight and i was just sending lily a bunch of messages after so I, I finished it and i um uh... But I literally, first thing I said was, fuck me, that was a lot. Because it was. It was. Um, and then I said, how often, how do you watch this on a regular basis? Holy shit. It's 10. I'd like, I do. Here's my, I, my trouble with that would be watching something like that so often would either it would ruin the intensity for me because I get used to it too much, or it would continue to just be too tense <laughs> to be watching on that regular basis. I don't know. I can't. I it's it's because as I wrote it to you, it's it's just the excitement never leaves it. Like whenever I rewatch it, it's it's always there. And I just love these characters a lot. Great. They are freaking amazing. And uh, you know, I just love the whole thing from beginning to end. Like I literally don't have any point where I go like, okay, yeah, I'm bored. It it just doesn't uh, it's, happen. It's, it's, I was surprised at how slowly it started. Mm. Um. Because it was like it was ten minutes in, and it was like they weren't even on the train for yep. like fifteen minutes in, they weren't even on the train yet. I was like, "Huh, okay, I guess we're we're really building up to this, <laughs> huh?" But when it, okay, I'm going to say something now, okay. right? Okay, and I want you to know that this is the only time that you're getting you're going to get to hear this. I see your point on the idea of the fast running zombie, specifically in this movie. It's it's very effective. However, I also retain my own thing where I'm like, this, this, this is like on the cusp of actually being a zombie film because they are infected, and I'm like, they've got enough zombie qualities. Or I'm like, okay, I understand why you're gonna call them zombies, but they are in the sort of 28 days later camp where I'm like, technically speaking. <laughs> they are infected. But because I know my friend Cass is going to yell at me, I think that they account as being zombies because these people clearly die and then sort of kind of come back. So yep. it's 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 in that strange sort of liminal space where I'm like, okay, mm. it's a bit of both. It's yes, yes, we can definitely say it's a bit of both. <laughs> I, I, but yeah, and it's just, I think this is I think maybe it's because I found that specific, particularly World War Z, which was kind of marketed as this like. Fast running zombies. I was like, mm. this is so dull. <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't effective. Zombies are meant to be slow walking, but in this, it's like, oh shit, these are actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> right, right. And I was very impressed by all of the um, uh, the stunt people that they clearly had for mm. uh, for the because the the physicality of them is Oof. really cool. Yep. and <laughs> uncomfortable. It is in really a uncomfortable. Cool way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like the oh man, it was like lots of very dis like double jointed people mm-hmm. moving limbs about in ways that they probably shouldn't be able to move. And I was probably like, probably not. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it it it's still when, whenever I rewatch it, it, it still is just like I have that. <sighs> oh my god! If I would see it in real life, right in front of me, <sighs> it's just it's not no, <laughs> it's just too scary, too much. But I am so happy that you watched it and that you oh, liked it. Like I will say two two spoilery things. One, okay. so you know, just so we know, spoilers are about to happen. Yes. Fuck the rich guy. Yes. Fuck oh, that my... guy so oh, much. God. Holy fuck. I hate that. Man. That guy sucks a lot. I want my mom. I want my mom. Fuck you. It's like get off the fucking train, you dick. Oh. I hate that man Do so something much. good for once and you like to just jump off. Yeah, just <laughs> fuck off. No. I mean, so many people die because of him. So many. And I was like, so... Oh. 
Oh, okay, yes. It yes. was the way that they kind of like the the train conductor got off the train to help, and I was like, no, he just sacrificed two people. Leave the fucker there. Yep. <laughs> like not even like I'm just gonna run away. He actively pushed people into other people into the, into the the zombies. It's like yeah. nah, fuck this guy. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and and two my utter disappointment and like sadness at the end when he the dad did not survive i I was so upset i was like no (laughs) this guy went through such a good arc i know (laughs) i wanted him to make it yeah yeah that's that's still it's very hard to watch (laughs) it's like why (laughs) like it's already too much that they kill modong songs uh uh this is why, I, I, I said this to you. I was like, this is why you want a barbarian on your team in the, in the apocalypse. You just want somebody who can swing some fucking hits. <laughs> Dude just decks people. I'm like, yes, I love this. Yeah. I mean, he was he was the true hero, let's be fair. What what a boss. And I was I like I was really terrified for like that split second when they get to um the transition and he's trying to like take his take um his kid oh, away yeah and then they all sort of appear i thought he was going to close the door on him and i was like well that would be karmic justice <laughs> but i was very glad that he didn't yep <laughs> but yeah i am very happy and yeah you know good 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 i, I mean i i honestly would have been surprised if you would have said that it's it's not good oh yeah and no, like... i i <laughs> I th- at no point me not watching this film was nothing to do with the fact that I thought it was going to be bad. It was just a matter of like the mood that I had been in for the for a while. It's like I need to be in the right space to be able to watch kind of a movie like that. Mm. And I was like, okay, this will transfer this anxiety into anxiety that's easier to process. <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> that's like, I finished funny. it and I was like, okay, now I'm I like feel like I've worked something out here and I'm I'm feeling better and then I stuck on um dimension twenty stuff to like <laughs> decompress a little bit. Like watch a couple of a few nice people talk to each other and then I'll go to sleep. Fair. I mean that completely fair. fair. And I slept great. So <laughs> There you go. This is excellent. And then, you know, once again, I have to say that we're going to see Madong Sok in The Eternals. And now you understand my excitement. <laughs> is he the same guy that's in... It's not It's not the same guy that's in Parasite, is it? The dad? No, no I didn't think so. Because I was sitting there going... Because I know that the guy who plays the dad in Parasite is like a really famous guy. Korean actor. Mm-hmm. I'm very sorry that I don't know his name. Um, it's not going to come to me either. I apologize. Uh, I, I've, like, we already, we've, this has been established. I'm pretty bad with names. Same. <laughs> just, <laughs> just terrible with them. Um, but I was like, don't, I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is not the same guy. Um, and, but I just, ha- I just knew that he, the, the guy in Paris, like, was like, like a really famous sort of like mm-hmm. Brad Pitt style sort of actor with it in, in Korea. Um, so I was like, is it? No, I don't think so. They don't, no, they don't look the same. So it's like, nope. All right. No. I'm glad that I, I've, I've cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's, he's going to make his debut in The Eternals to the US cinema, I believe, because I don't think uh, he acted in, in anything American, to be fair. So, yeah. I think the kid in it, though, the like baseball mm. player, he is in Parasite. He is. He's yes. the son. That I know I recognized him. I was like, he's definitely the same guy. Yep. I know that. Yep. <laughs> he is. I was that that was another one where he was like holding his like girlfriend, I guess. Um It's a complicated relationship. I, I guess. Yes. Um and she's like dying. I'm like, dude, you gotta go. And then he just sort of let it happen. I was like, oh, or you could do that. That works too. I mean, he lost everyone at that point. So. Yeah. You know, because was was, like, mm. it was the thing of like he was holding her, and I was like, "She's gotta, you gotta go, dude." And, and I was like, and then he suddenly like went right, and I was like, "Oh, okay, we're doing this, and we're fine." Yeah, I guess this is how we're, we're going. Yep, unfortunately. Ah, <sighs> so happy. Good, I was like, movie. I yeah, yeah, great movie. <laughs> I I was reading your messages in the morning, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it happened." <laughs> I felt the same excitement when you watched Planet of the Apes and I was like, ha! <laughs> Little scream. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right, now get to our boy, Mr. Loki. And 
your thoughts. Let's let's start with you. I want to hear your you thoughts. Start with me? Yes. I love it. I think it's the best thing that Marvel's done in a really long time. Mm. Okay. I think it's, it's... <laughs> um <laughs> uh I had my, with both of the previous Marvel things, I had my sort of criticisms with the fact that they, they went only so deep into certain character stuff. And I kind of wish that they dug more into certain character stuff. This actually dug into stuff in the way that I, I really wanted it to, like within the first episode. And then it kept kind of mm. scratching at it. And I was like, ah, this is it. This is what I wanted. I think it has the potential to go further. I think it really does. Like it has, like it's like you're like so close to being perfect for me, mm -hmm. um, uh, and hopefully with this season two, which we're getting a season two, which is very exciting. Yep. Um, they'll keep like scratching at like the thing and like going deeper and deeper into the character because I think they're, and I think really we have to thank Tom Hiddleston for that mm. as a producer on the project. He clearly had like an he we all know he's like such an advocate for the character he was giving lectures on on like the history of him yeah. cares about him very deeply so i think i think we really have him as uh, to thank for for a lot of the good stuff that you get out of this um yeah i i've i fucking love the whole thing i, I mean i've also been like a loki sort of like I've I've I I got really into Loki back when 20, 2012's Avengers movie came out and mm. it's one of those things that like lies dormant until another Loki thing comes out and I'm like oh, fuck yeah I really love this character <laughs> like I hadn't thought about it in ages when between like the time uh, Thor the Dark World and Thor Ragnarok came out I was mm -hmm. like I'd moved on to other things I wasn't really like yeah I was like yeah I've moved on from this stuff like I like it a bit plenty and then Ragnarok came out and I was like no shit they got him so right. They nailed him. Yeah. Yes. That was the best Loki, like, you know, other than this one. Mm -hmm. This, this, I'd wait, be... but this. <laughs> that one. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, specifically that scene in the Citadel, as he calls it, mm -hmm. um, where he's like, he really shows like the entire growth of his character at that yeah. point where he's like no I just I care about you and I think we should think this through I'm like that's my Loki right there that's my boy I don't care about any other Loki's it's that one that I want my, my son <laughs> that's why I was like nothing but respect for my Loki you know yeah. but yeah I loved it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> go ahead uh hmm why I do love it, I do have criticism. Like, yeah, it's, to, it's, to it, be fair. It, it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we know what anybody who's paid attention to anything you've been saying on Twitter recently knows that one of them is the, the case. <sighs> I was physically sick from that. I was like, nope. Mm -mm. Here's why. Because our friend Ryan keeps bogging me with it. So now I wish we I... had a really good discussion about this the other day, which yes. we really should have saved for this, but let's get into it. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Like, you know, uh, for the record, I do love all the characters. I love Sylvie. I love Loki. I love the show. But there are two things I don't like, and one of them is the kiss and the relationship that they built around it. And I don't like that because I think, and these two things obviously intertwine, I think... They took Loki's shine away. I'm gonna be honest. Like, uh, especially now that I read more about it, like what other people thought about the series as a whole, uh, I think the same thing happened with it that tends to happen with a few things, especially when they are bringing in new characters and and whatnot. In episode six, Loki was just tagging along. I'm sorry if if it completely felt like that. Like, you know, I came to watch this guy behind me. Like, I was interested in his story and it became a Sylvie story, which is, yes, I know, she's another Loki and whatnot. No, I, I, I do have to agree with you a little bit there. I was a little bit, like, um, I felt like it, it kind of saved itself a little bit at the end um, when he, he it kind of refocuses it back in on him and he's like, I'm going to go find Mobius and I'm going to try and sort this shit out. Yeah. Um, but I am with you a little bit where it's like, but this is why when we, we spoke about this before, I, why I was really worried that they were trying to phase him out. Mm -hmm. It felt like they were trying to really bring in, and I think Sylvie's great, 
Yeah. I just don't want her to replace him Mm-mm. at all. Mm-mm. I like I want I still want this to be his story. I still and, want him to be the character I, yep. I focus in on. And I'm not going to lie by the end it felt like it wasn't his story. Like, you know, even even during the season there were places where I was like so wait a minute. We have this Loki who's, you know, planning to bring down the TVA and and whatnot and then all of that gets basically forgotten the minute Sylvie appears. Because mm. basically we just, you know, where is where are the tricks? Where are, you know, everything that makes Loki Loki? I know it's it's also, you know, in there that he grows as a character, but I mean, in his core, he's a god of mischief and it it didn't really show. <laughs> like, you know. He he at point felt incredibly dumb, I'm gonna say that. Like I felt like they dumbed down his character to serve Sylvia's story. And I, I was I was a bit, you know, like, uh-huh, no. <laughs> like, you know, that's why I didn't want it that love aspect of the whole thing. That's why I think them building a sibling kind of relationship would have made much more sense in my eyes. Like I I I would have preferred that to this. Because you said it and I do agree with you that Sylvie used that case as a manipulation. Like I, I am with you completely. Still, yeah, there were other options to do that. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like, I, I do feel that in a lot of ways. I do find, I personally find characters who have, like, who love in a way that is incredibly all-encompassing and not really, like, specific to, like, a person. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like it, they, they, they don't have, like, like, categories of love that they have for different people. Um, like it's like oh I love you in this particular way or I love you in this particular way mm-hmm. I like I do love a character who who has this sort of like all encompassing like I just love the people that I love and it yeah. kind of is the same for all of them and mm-hmm. it's very all in, it, it's very deep and meaningful and I love that he has that well within him and that we got to kind of see that yeah. come out of him and just like honestly the the, the thing that I, I loved most about the fight that they had mm-hmm. was the way when she was like come on kill me and take the throne and instead of just going like no he goes like so like emotionally he goes no yeah. <laughs> I'm like oh that one got me yeah. <laughs> I really and, loved that and that showed that like come on he's he's an excellent actor first and foremost like come on second there was so much more in his character and I felt like that got pushed down like, yeah I, I've, I felt this feeling with basically every single one of the shows that we've had so far mm-hmm. I think that this has done it the best personally um I think I still think I still think this is, has given a, a, a more depth to the character and like the, the, I agree with everything that, yeah. than the other two like I felt like I was having a discussion with somebody yesterday about I like I we've we've talked about it before. I really loved Phantom and the Wind Soldier, mm-hmm. but the criticism that they didn't go deep enough into some of the characters is definitely valid. And I think specifically, like um, obviously Anthony Mackie is incredible, and I love everything that they did with that character. But I think they did a disservice to Bucky by putting him next, like having his story intertwined with his, because it meant that both of them didn't get enough time. Yeah, and I like I think. Bucky is such an interesting well of trauma and like mm-hmm. like angst and stuff that you could like go so deeply into and they just sort of scratch the surface mm-hmm. of him and I'm like I want more of like his actual struggle yeah um uh and it's like yes okay this is the, the people who were like yeah but it's 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 um it's sad. I was like, I, I my brain was only saying Anthony Mackie. I was like, what's the fucking character's name? <laughs> it's, it's, this is Sam's story. And I'm like, yeah. okay, but they marketed this as a Sam and, and Bucky yeah. story. Yeah. And it's Bucky being a sidekick again mm-hmm. to uh, obviously an incredibly, it, like, it, it, it could have been just Sam's story or just Bucky's story. I think putting them together kind of like decreased the, the, what you got out of both of them, especially within so few episodes. Um, I, I think that was more of the the problem. Like, you know, I, I think since Steve is gone and Steve was both of their best friend, basically, by the end, yeah. like we can easily say that he was Sam's best friend as well. Yeah. Um, 
and therefore i think they do belong together as yeah. you know as that friendship that you can uh, like you know that's important to me so i, I really... it's a great friendship that <laughs> yeah. plays out so well it's yeah. just there's not enough there was there was not enough time yeah. and i think we could probably blame the pandemic a little bit on that because clearly they that like i think i've read that there was like a lot of restructuring that they had to do in order to like fit things around mm-hmm. the pandemic stuff and it's like it it decreased the quality by just a bit and i think this is just generally a marvel issue as well yeah. when it comes to like marvel writing they will go for ab- about an, as much as they think they can get away with in like the deep sort of character stuff um Oh, they're like, look, we did it, and it's like, no, 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 no. This is a TV show. We should have more hours, and you should keep digging, yep. <laughs> keep digging further. I, I think because you know, we obviously know that Wonder Vision was a, a limited series, and it, it was meant to set up uh, Wanda as, as the Scarlet Witch, and then the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was just a limited series that meant to set up Sam as Captain America. Yeah, but. I do think that if One Division got eight episodes, I know they were shorter. I get that. I think the Falcon and the Winter Soldier could have gotten that eight episode. I think so too. I think they could have. Um, I think they could have allowed things to breathe mm-hmm. like a lot more. Um, and I saw a post the other day actually that was like, "Why do we keep like um, making TV shows shorter? You're basically just trying to make a movie." Like at this point. Um, going from like we used to we used to have at least especially in American shows we used to be 22 episodes which I understand is not viable for the crews who work on them because it's like hell like mm-hmm. they do eight days worth of shooting and then they go straight on to the next set which is another eight days of shooting it's like okay yeah no we can't be doing that but like then we used to have like 13 episode shows and now things are kind of going like they even cutting down like 10 episode seasons to eight episode seasons and now suddenly we're getting these six episode seasons which i think it depends on the show that you're creating you should be creating an ep- like the number of episodes for the show that you're making as opposed to trying to fit a story within the number of episodes that the network wants to give you yep. right mm-hmm. so it's like Falcon and the Winter Soldier could easily have been like an episode or two longer and those episodes being like just like sort of sitting in the adversity that is of of the moment right allowing that kind of conflict to breed and kind of fester a little bit more so that when you get to the moment at the end of the season when he decides to be pick up the zoo or like um when Bucky actually does make the decision to continually move away from being that kind of assassin character um it feels more earned yeah because it at the like and this is this was my my issue in wandavision as well when it felt like the whole fight with uh the intellectual fight with white vision and vision mm. it was like it was just it was too quick it's like it felt like it 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 for me it felt like it it um it resolved too quickly. Like I wanted more conflict. I wanted the the resolution of the thing to feel more earned. Um, and it... on on that point, let's not forget. Like I heard that co- uh, complaint about it as well from you, from others. But vision is artificial intelligence. Yeah, I just, so... I just, I just <laughs> wanted like, like it, it didn't even have to be like an episode or anything longer. I literally just like one or two more beats within that conversation where he was still fighting it a little bit because he's still programmed at that point so like just a, like a little bit more conflict in the run-up to literally just the rest of that scene mm. like, just a smidge more i mean like oh and no, i don't obviously i don't believe you because like the, I'm, I'm like i am my own thing and all this other stuff like no, no no we're gonna keep talking about this like a little bit more back and forth mm. until you get to that point that's all I would have wanted from that thing. And I think that would have really boosted the entire series up like a little bit more for me. Yeah. But that's just, yeah, yeah. that's, a, that's a rhythm thing, you know? Mm, mm, mm. No, it's, it's completely fair. Like, you know, every opinion is valid. So, uh, I will use this moment here to say, if you're one of those people who's attacking Tom Hiddleston, because how Loki went down, fucking stop doing it like it's not the actor's fault how the characters are doing in a show like sending him death threats like are we playing the whole laura bailey abby situation again like that it's not normal and i the most disturbing thing that someone got his home address 
and threatened to send people there to protest, uh, to reshoot Loki and, and send. Like, are you people normal? Is everything oh. okay in here? Here's, here's my thing, is like, I understand the temptation to go, like, balls deep in like invested in a thing right i did it as a teenager myself uh i was so obsessed with sherlock it was the only thing i thought about for a very long and like many many hours of the day it was like i don't only care about this thing but when your um your reaction to a thing is that visceral and that like terrible and it is actively causing you emotional pain that a character did not behave in the way that you wanted them to, you have to make an effort to step the fuck back. Mm-hmm. Um, like, cause it's not healthy for you or anybody around you. And you need to make the effort to be like, okay, m- clearly my emotional investment in this is too much and it's gotten to a toxic place. So I need to make the decision to completely devoid, like to cut myself off from this thing. Like it's not worth it. It is it like and this is this it's a TV show. It's not life. Uh it doesn't matter that much. Go outside, talk to somebody you actually know about real things. Mm. Stop thinking about a TV show because you don't know these people. They are not here to serve you. They are giving you a piece of entertainment and it is your job to n- figure out how to um yeah, ingest that yeah. in a way that is healthy yep. for you and everybody else around you. Yep. Yeah, That's I 100% it. agree. Like, you know, I love Marvel with all my heart. I do think I am very invested in it. But please just learn to separate the character from the actor because they are two very different things. And, and also, it's just, you know, it's just the, a... you, don't, you don't know the actor. Like, you may feel like you do. That is what's called a parasocial relationship. And they're very, like, you need to understand how to navigate. Because I, I love the, uh, the, 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 the idea of a parasocial relationship. is very yeah. fascinating to me and on a psychological level. Mm. We are naturally very social creatures and we want to connect, like, inherently. But you don't actually know the person. Like, you just don't. No. Uh, you may feel like you do because you know things about them, but you've never had a conversation with them. Mm-mm. You don't know them on a social and like real personal level. So what you say and your feelings about them has absolutely no bearing on who they are. Nope. Uh, and you shouldn't be burdening them with Mm-mm. them. So just, just just take a step back. Just stop. Just come away. Be with your family, mm-hmm. with your friends or your, your family friends. <laughs> You're it's, friendly <laughs> it's just simply not okay and that's like the end of the conversation it's not okay to threaten them uh, to kill them and whatnot because of a tv show just i have to regularly uh, especially on twitter now um there are there, there's a, there's a certain type of sort of sort of fan stan culture that used to exist very prominently on tumblr that has now moved to twitter and it's these like 16 17 18 year olds mm-hmm. who are like like fully stan like culture proper like intense stuff and i have to block them because it's like they also exist in this incredibly black and white yep. moral state where nobody's allowed to make any mistakes um, oh yeah <laughs> uh nobody is allowed to say anything that is remotely bad because otherwise you are a pariah mm-hmm. and you're terrible mm-hmm. and you should go die in a hole apparently Basically, yeah. to them. and i'm yeah. like i can't be dealing with that i am an adult woman who actively isn't the same person she was five years ago <laughs> you know yeah it's like no i can't i can't be there and and this is here's my new psa if somebody annoys you on twitter or tumblr or any social media just block, block them, them. Yeah, it's like the, the your social media is yeah. just it's meant to be there for you and you can engage in it in whatever way you like you don't need to listen to anybody else the, the, what a stranger on the internet says about you has absolutely no bo- actual moral bearing on your life and you mm-hmm. don't need to let it be that way so it's I it, honestly the most liberating thing in the world is is finally being co- in a place where I'm comfortable looking at somebody who says something that I don't like um, and like actively makes me sort of feel bad and going you know what now and just blocking them because yeah. it's like i don't know you i have i, I don't owe you anything nope nope it's easy as that 
So, you know, just, just, just block them. Just block them. Or even if you don't want to block them, scroll on by. You don't need to engage. Mute them. That's another option. Or you option. can mute them, yeah. You should just scroll on by. You don't. Bye. And I, I, and I know it's very easy to look at discourse and get sucked into the, like, black hole that is people saying bad things about a thing you like. Um, you you just, just make the effort to just cut it off. Cut it off. And I understand that sometimes discourse is very necessary, but also, you know, sometimes you just like a thing. And as long as, I think as long as you're trying your best to read a piece of media text with as much sort of um, understanding of, you know, criticism and, mm. and like, you got to read it complexly, you know, you can read a thing and be like, I really enjoy this, but also it's got some these, I hate the word problematic. I hate everything around the culture of it and all that sort of stuff, but everything has an element of problematic, you know, nature yeah. to it. Right. Yeah. And as long as you're kind of being like, yeah, I recognize that. And I'm not going to let that affect my yeah. actual morals. Then I think, I think we're good. Yeah. I'm going to trust you trust you the audience to actually make a moral like a like a, a an adult decision not to let this thing twist your life no oh, i agree i agree 100 percent uh but yeah that was our psa <laughs> <laughs> i've i've apparently had off. that brewing within me oh, yeah. for a lot it's, it's very very fucking annoying so i just had to say something because i keep seeing it and i'm like this is just not okay guys but anyway what are your theories uh, regarding Loki's events? I don't know. I told you before, I have no theories about this. I'm just enjoying the ride. So I can tell mine then? I, I guess. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Before I say anything, I just want to say I'm so proud I was right. About Kang? Yes. He's brilliant. I know. Absolutely amazing. So good. Everything about that whole scene was like He stole the show. I'm uh, sorry. Expertly done. <laughs> he he stole, did. He um and I'm very fascinated to see more of him. Yes. We're gonna see a lot more. A lot of him. more of him, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am incredibly happy for that. I'm not gonna lie, like I that's why I um, he is one of the reasons I encourage you again to watch Lovecraft Country. I have all the episodes downloaded and I just haven't watched freaking, it. Freaking watch it. Like, At least he's... I think I have all the episodes downloaded. This is so funny. Uh, <laughs> I will say that for me, an actor becomes a really great one when there's a lot of difference between the characters they do. And Jonathan Majors is like the peak example of that. Like his character, he, what he was able to do here as he who remains uh, versus what he did in Lovecraft Country is like a huge freaking difference and, and I loved the all all that he did. Uh, like, you know, there are just actors that are really good but they are always like kind of the same if that makes mm. sense. I do. Um, so, you know, Jonathan, I love you. You're great. I'm so happy that you succeeded uh, uh, in this in this bet because you're amazing. Um, he stole the show. I was right. I'm so happy I was right. <laughs> I, I, don't, I'm, I, I was just curious because I was like, I, I don't really know much about his career. Oh, well, he, um, he basically started not too long ago. I was going to say, this is it's a pretty new career. Yep. Um, so it's very exciting that he's, he's, he's got a lot of really cool stuff on, on the books and he's done a lot of really cool stuff yep. already. Um, this is great. Yeah, he's, he's freaking great. very exciting. Like, come on, I'm so happy for him. So so happy, and I cannot wait to see him back because the confirmed uh, coming back for him is in Ant Man. Ant Man, uh, yeah. The third Ant Man movie where he's gonna be Ka uh, Kang. I still Kang the Conqueror. Yep, yes, it says there you go. It says so right here. There, there you go. I just I don't know how to say that name because we say it differently in Hungarian. So I'm like, oh wait, Kang. Kang. Okay. Right. I'm gonna forget it, but anyway, <laughs> very we're fine where you are anyway, so it's good. 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 Uh, so that's exciting. And here's my his. I will only share one of my theories because the others I wrote it down in an article. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. Don't want to spoil the article. No. <laughs> Find these articles but, on yeah. with the retro replay website. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. that's the one. Uh, and um, I'm very good at supporting my co-host. <laughs> You are amazing. <laughs> and um, one I already shared on Twitter and I'm going to share it here as well. 
My theory, uh, I did read this. Hmm. My theory is that the Jane Foster that we're going to get in Thor Love and Thunder, and obviously who is Mighty Thor as well, is going to be a variant of Jane Foster. It's very possible. I, 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 yeah. I think it is very possible as well, because Mjolnir does not... Well, it still exists in pieces, basically, <laughs> in this timeline, but uh, yeah. Thor did go back to get it from the past uh, for Endgame, and then Captain America took it back to the past, so... I mean, anything's possible now. They I broke mean, the timeline. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the timeline is like, pff, fucked. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Sylvie, you fucked up the MC for the next probably 10 years. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> So proud. So proud. Uh, I mean, it's going to be very exciting to see what they're going to do with it. But that's like one of my main theories that uh, this Jane is going to turn out to be like a variant of the Jane mm. Foster. That, I think that makes know, a lot of sense. Might be completely wrong. Might be completely wrong. But at this point, it's like, well, it, I mean, anything can happen. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 100% agree. Uh, the other is like rumors are going around that... Uh, they are just rumors because nobody confirmed it yet. But uh, it is very possible, I think, that Tom is going to end up appearing in movies again. Like, mm -hmm. it would make sense in Doctor Strange. I'll yeah, there's a lie. lot of people suggesting that he's going to turn up in Doctor Strange with Wanda and it's going to be mm -hmm. the three of them sort of turn sort, sort shit out. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know how Im important of a character he would be in that story because obviously he's still got... We we've been confirmed for a season two, which I heard is because the original season of Loki was going to be 12 episodes yes. and then the pandemic forced them to cut it in two. So really, this is just like um, act one. Act, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah Which yeah. I find to be fascinating. <laughs> I, uh, someone wrote it that it's very highly possible that they already have many stuff from season two. Like yeah. already, you know, in there. Because we have seen scenes that didn't show up in the actual episode. So one can wonder uh very exciting uh that's why i i think it is very possible that he's gonna he's gonna come back to the movies as well i wouldn't be surprised seeing him in thor to be honest uh no the, um taika waititi already confirmed that he's not going to be in thor um, i read it in a, there was an article in empire he was like he's not in it he's, he's not like and i feel like at this point i would i'm unless unless they're being cagey about it in which he wasn't he was being very straight it's like this is a movie about thor um and loki is not within it and i was like okay that's fine with me fair fair but we know that they can be misleading i just at this point i want to be able to just believe it when somebody says something so i'm just gonna believe it until oh, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> i am you know? I'm still like hmm, suspicious <laughs> like... it was one of those like no he's not in it and like okay if they like when, when they kind of come along and goes well, I can't really talk about it, but I don't know. And I'm like, okay, so he's, he's going to... It's, ah, uh, there was something the other day I, I read. Somebody was... Oh, it was, it was... You don't care about this at all, but I was watching the Witcher panel with Henry Cavill. Yes. Um, honestly, it's a good show, dude. And you just not... haven't... <laughs> you, did you watch the whole thing? No, because after 20 minutes I died. I was. Like, yeah, oh. there you go. You haven't given it enough. It's a good show. <laughs> yeah go on go on I'm um <laughs> he uh josh Howard's asked him say like, hey so what's yaskia yaskia doing in season two and henry cavill went can't really talk about it. and i went oh good so yaskia's got some interesting stuff going on in season two excellent <laughs> i i didn't understand that but sure <laughs> yaskia's my boy ah well, and you didn't meet you him would... because you didn't get to season two the episode two sorry <laughs> i'm sorry but the acting in that first episode was so horrendous that I couldn't watch it. I I already said this. I just couldn't bear it. I was like, Ugh, what is this shit? <laughs> and they compared it to fucking Game of Thrones and it's not even close to Game of not, Thrones. They're not the same thing. I just, that's another fantasy thing. Anyway, it's, it's a... It, it, it is... Dad, you have... I just... I can't get on board with this opinion that you have. <laughs> Like, which one <laughs> just the idea that you think that this it's not bad it's very good oh my it's God. not perfect it's very good though i'm gonna give it a look you didn't even you didn't like i just 
I would like you to be able to get to like I think episode five is the one that I really like, which is um the story the the uh, I can't remember what it they, it's got a specific name in the book um that they adapted, but it's it's the story of, of uh, Geralt accidentally releases a gin and then he has three wishes and it's a, it's also a Yaskia story. Did you play The Witcher 3? Yeah. So Yaskia is Dandelion. Oh, okay. And he's just so good at it. Um, and it's, it's a... It's, Yaskia is trying to like capture a, a gin or, or I think... I can't remember. It's been like a year since I watched this now. But there is a gin involved, and there's it, it's a very important episode. But it's also the best sort of like example of their relationship, which is I think my favorite thing about the entire show, because mm. <laughs> he's just sort of there, like so sort of angry, and Yask is just like so happy. <laughs> just it's great. I on it's it, it's really good. Fine. All of because you watched her into Busan, I will give it another go. Just yeah, I honestly, if you still hate it by the end of the season, I'll drop it forever. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the deal. I'm not gonna lie. Like for me, the acting in that first episode, like I watched the first twenty minutes. I'm not even gonna deny it. And it was it was atrocious. Like some of the parts were like literally like, uh, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't like this. Like, come just, on. just like I, I, I would just ask that you go in with an open mind, ready to receive the idea that this show actually might be good, instead of going in already thinking you hate it. Fine, I can try. Because, uh. <laughs> like, yeah, like I said, I understand if the I, I think the thing that sold me on the show was the fight scene that happens at the end of the first episode. Uh, because I thought that the action of it was very good. I liked the way it was filmed. It was very sort of visceral and it was like, oh, this is my in, mm. right? And I think sometimes you need that for a show in that you kind of watch it and go, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not sure if I like it. I'm not sure if I dislike it, but I don't know if I... And it's like, I don't know, there's something that needs to connect me to it. And for me, in that first episode, it was the the fight scene in Blaviken that I was like, ah, this is pretty neat. Um so that's that's all that's all I'll say for that. Fine, fine. I already And also, it. if you don't like it, please just tell like that you can not like Geralt, but you have to like Yaskia. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the rules. <laughs> I I thought that you're going to say that I have to like Geralt and I was like, mm. nah. <laughs> like I have a complicated relationship with Henry Cavill, okay? Okay. Huh. <laughs> I did that. That panel that I watched was very fun though, because he he's sitting there and he's like Josh Horowitz. Is, he asks him, he's like, how did your like sort of creative tendencies kind of manifest themselves as a child and stuff like that? He kind of he's kind of sat there for a minute and kind of talked around it, and then he goes, well, I do have this one thing. And he talked about how like as a kid he made like a in like primary school he would make like a castle out of clay, and he goes for my Warhammer minis, which is ridiculous because the, the <laughs> these people actually exist in the forest. And I was like, you are such a nerd. He is. I do like that about him. I look at that about him. Like, yeah. He's like, this, this is this is glorious. It's like so nerdy. Because then, and then, like two minutes later, he starts showing off about the fact that he had like the thirty ninety graphics card. And I'm like, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like the hot nerd. Like, let's be fair. Uh, Insert picture of him making PC here. <laughs> oh God, Do I had to. <laughs> yeah, have to. That was just me making. I mean. Fine. It's a good. It's a good picture, though. It it's is very... a good picture. I'm gonna... Fine. I love. I love. I love buff nerds, and they just. They make me very happy. The idea of anybody who's just like this really big jock kind of character coming along with me, like, okay, but here's the minutia of this really nerdy thing that I like. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> like dichotomy. Perfect. Like, true. I do like it as well. It's fun. It's like it's your Travis Willingham uh, sort of like vibe, you know, of just like huge dude could probably deck you in one punch going really into the details of like any nerd media like to telling you the specifics of lord of the rings i'm yeah. like perfect <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh our friend desmond uh when i did uh I'll yes to you with him and, I, and he mentioned that he just built his pc and i was like did you record <laughs> You should have got it. Like, come on! You missed like a big opportunity there. I watched it. It was a great thing I watched recently. Um, it was during uh, the talkback show for Dimension Twenty Adventuring Party, yeah. where they were talking about how 
jocks and nerds are basically they're basically the same like jocks are just really nerdy about sport yeah it's the same it's the same and I, I was kind of sitting there going oh, that's a very good point because I mean like I'm not I'm not sporty I'm not athletic I don't like sports I just I don't get on with them um but it was at the first time I was like, oh, you know what? That's a very good point. I should put this weird bias I have against like athleticism and stuff away because it is the same. They're just really excited about slightly different things. Yeah. And I still hate football, but like <laughs> same, <laughs> same. I don't know. But uh, I do get I do get that point as well. Actually, I uh, yesterday I was allowed because I had a massive headache, so I binge watched season two of Never Have I Ever, which is a fantastic show on Netflix. I haven't watched it, but I've heard really, really good things about I... it. And every so often I see it and I'm like, I should get around to watching that at some point. Yes, please. It's I love that show so much. And especially I really I love this second season a lot more than I love the first one. And I love the first it's one. It's the well. it's the one about the, the Desi girl, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's it, it's created by Mindy Kelling, so you know, it's yeah, glorious, glorious show. I really liked it. The se- second uh, season was fucking amazing. I liked it a lot, 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 lot. And I was right. <laughs> I was just going to say it there as well. I was right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm I so... had things that I was correct again. That's all. I love it when I'm right. I'm not going to lie. Like I, uh, That's my, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pet, I don't pet, know. Not pet peeve. The other P word, pet pe- it's not gonna come to me i don't know what you're trying to say um, it's, it's similar to pet peeve but it's it's a different uh... explain what you mean around it like what, what is it what is it that you it's like um i don't know i can't even explain <laughs> my english is broken today let's call it pet peeve it's my pet peeve that i like to be right especially when it comes to movies and tv shows and i was right this about mm. this one thing <laughs> The only one that's coming to mind is prerogative, and I don't think that that's no, what you're going no, no, for. No, 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 um, no. Because it's definitely, I know, and now I kind of understand what you're going for. It's not, it's definitely not pet peeve. No, um, it's not pet peeve. It's uh, uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it, I have it, I have it. I just can't say it. I, I don't know how to. Petty? Petty? Uh, no? No, I I'm completely saying it wrong. It's P E T T Y. Petty. That's the one. Petty. You're petty about I it. Am. Got it. I am. Is is that? Am I using it correctly? Uh, yes. Um, sort of. Yeah. So petty is usually negative, is what I'd say. Um, when you're petty about something, um, you're usually like, um, like somebody does something to slight you slightly, and you just uh, get a bit petty about it. Okay. That I'm not using correct. I'm not using it correctly. I don't know what to call it. I do know what you mean, though. It's a, you're a bit like um. Ah oh, shit. There is a word <laughs> for it. We're just gonna. It's, it's not somebody happening today. Can stick it in the comments. That's what they can do. Okay. <laughs> we are very good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's like my thing, and I was right, and I'm happy about it. Like I was with with Lucky. I'm very happy about that. But anyway, uh, in season two. Uh, um, Debbie is uh, tutoring Paxton. They are two of the main characters, and one of uh... Paxton's the white guy. No, that's right. bad. No, <laughs> shit. That's I bad. don't know. I don't watch the show. I've I only seen faces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, Paxton okay, is like bad. you know uh, considered to be a jock, and you know okay. like he's he, he has a lot of. Uh, self doubt and and he's thinking in this season especially that he might be dumb and you know it, it it's it's no. really really beautifully done in the show I really like that um, and uh, David uh, tells him because he loves swimming and and he te- and she tells him that uh, think about studying like you think about swimming which is basically you know what was the the biggest swimming thing that you did. And then Paxton says that he swam to San Diego from Los Angeles, I believe. So it's like Crikey. something like Jesus Christ <laughs> thing. And then, uh, you know, there is like, oh, OK, then this is swimming to San Diego. Like, it's the same thing. Like, try to give it like, you know, uh, she is trying to make him to give it his 110 percent when it comes to studying because she truly believes that he's not dumb and he's not dumb. Like, you know, it's clear from 
how he is. And I, that's what I was I was right about because a lot of people were like team man at the end of season one and you know Paxton is just your typical jog guy in this teen drama teen comedy more like uh, and I and I told I, I said it there it was a conversation with AJ Reacts and, and our friends Elliot uh, uh, and I said it there that I think there's so much more to Paxton and in season two it becomes true because there is so much more to him and I love that I was right that's just good writing really it is just being able to take a character that seems like they're kind of like surface level and being like oh no you saw no. this here's all the here's the yeah. other half of the iceberg that, yeah, yeah and i love that i i love that they discovered it like i i remember that i told elliot and aj that they're gonna discover it in season two and i was right he has a separate episode so i was like hmm. <laughs> 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 so please watch never have i ever it's freaking wonderful get to it at some point i don't know. <laughs> I, I i watched uh, i told you this before we started i watched the first two episodes of schmigadoon yes it's, I uh, see. it's aaron it's aaron to vape day <laughs> yes but don't say anything about it i still have to watch it it's it's um okay you can say that <laughs> just good. don't spoil anything i, I still no, have no. to watch it. it's it yeah it's good and it's very silly but like in, in a good way i like silly things mm-hmm. let's be fair it's great and then after that, I have to sit down and watch the American Horror Stories because I am... Is it out? What... Yeah, it came out yesterday. Oh. First sure. two episodes. Oh, I have to watch Gotta it. Gotta go find them on the internet somewhere. I will do that as well because I am now intrigued. Uh, I watched the trailer in the end. I was like... Oh, you did watch the trailer. Yes. Like, you see what I mean by uh, about it yeah. just not really giving anything away. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, fine, fine. So now I'm intrigued. I, I will watch it. And then if I don't like it, I will be honest about it yeah, like yeah, usual <laughs> like the, and like i said the only the only i watched a very small clip from the show um and i was like oh this still has the same sort of strange but i i don't know how to explain it but like you watch i find with it literally anything mm. like any kind of show there is a very specific vibe that i attach to them yes and then in my head it, it's like it's very it, they're all really specific feelings that i could never express in proper words um but like I watched this and I was like, this has the same vibe as the first season that I watched of American Horror Story. And I'm like, ah, it's still Ooh, there. I hope good. that this doesn't give me very strange dreams like the other one did. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, but yeah, that's good. If if it has a season one vibe, I like that. I think, it, I think it's got a season one vibe. Hmm. I am. I like I said, it, I watched season one. Like, oh god six years ago or something like that now it was a while ago so like i'm going off of like a, a memory of a memory mm. sort of thing but like, i was i kind of seen the going oh this, this is giving me the same sort of vibes yeah um yeah but I, I'm, I'm intrigued i'm gonna go i'm gonna go searching for it later and see if i can find it i really just want to watch darren tomate and everything <laughs> I, I will find it as well. Oh, good. There are things. I, I have to watch Fear Street because the last part is out today. So yeah. that's the program for me to, uh, for tonight. Because let's be fair, like this, especially the second Fear Street was freaking awesome. I was so happy with it. Like much more happy than I was with the first one. I was like, yep, yeah, this is this is what I was waiting for. Good, good job, good job. Also, I have to say, ah, I'm so excited on July twenty third. Uh, the Kingdom special episode is coming out. So I'm like, oh! <laughs> I'm dying <laughs> a little bit, a tiny bit. I'm to think, do I have anything else that I'm, I'm like waiting for now? I don't actually know. I don't know like, if you have anything. I don't think I do. Oh no. Oh. I was do now. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, like, the other things I'm waiting for probably aren't going to come out until, like, next year. Like, the thing that keeps coming to mind is, like, the third season of The Umbrella Academy. That's, like, oh, yeah. that's the big one. And that's not good, because they're still filming, last I checked. Um, they started in, like, February. They might be finishing soon. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but, like, that's not going to come out until, like, probably early next year. Mm. Um, which is, like, that's the only, also the only sort of thing I'd, I'd sit there and go, I have theory because it's like I, I read the comics as well so I'm like really excited to see how they interpret like everything about Hotel Oblivion into this this new season and oh, oh I'm just I'm just really I miss I miss my kids <laughs> they are my kids my children <laughs> I miss them anyway. Yeah, I just like they like uh, a couple of weeks ago when when Geeked Week happened at Netflix they announced like all the episode names and i was sitting there going 
what is this? Everything about these names seems bad. <laughs> There's a lot of death, like, involved within, like, the names. Hang on, let's see if I can find out. The... Cause I, I, actually I, sent it, I sent it over to you. You well. did send it over to me, but we've also talked a lot since then, so I'm going to see if I can find the picture on, on Twitter. Um, I will say that. Academy season three. Oh, shit. Episode. I can't type today. Yeah. Deadline. Um, did you find it? I did, but it's also being very. Why is it? Okay. So, Meet the Family seems sort of self explanatory. The world's biggest ball of twine. No idea what's going on there. Somebody suggested that maybe there's going to be like a, a road trip. Mm. Um, a pocket full of lightning. Again, not sure. Something explosive. And, uh, some... and then you get to, then we get to these ones. Uh, Kugel Blitz, which I looked up and is a type of it's 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 a type of black hole that it, it eats um oh it's like it 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 doesn't eat matter it eats something else hmm. it, it's like a bit intense basically to read about um uh, it is a black hole formed from radiation as opposed to matter so it's like oh okay Jesus <laughs> then you get kindest cut and you're like we're going further down like a terrible route. Marigold, which has a lot of very like interesting theories around it. And then you get into Auf Wiedersehen, which means goodbye in German. Yes. The wedding at the end of the world. Who's fucking getting married? <laughs> Six bells, which to me just sounds like a death march. And then the last episode is called Oblivion. So nothing oh. good coming from the end of the season. <laughs> Yeah, that does sound pretty pretty dark. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, somebody's going to die. I think. Possible. I'm a bit worried about it. Possible, possible. They are making assumptions of, of who's gonna die in Phase Four in the Marvel universe as well. And there are some things in there that I don't like to think about. Like, who who did I see? Who did I I, I saw someone that I was like, oh no, please don't kill. Uh, who was it? Oh, Rocket. Uh, Rocket. From Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, "Oh boy, why would Rocket die? Like, what the fuck?" I heard that Rocket is going to be like, a kind of like the main character yes, in, yes, in Guardians true. Three, so that's, that's going to be like, that's going to be interesting. If they, if James gone, if you kill Rocket, <laughs> we're going to have a problem, buddy. Like, it's mm -mm, mm -mm. speaking of James Gunn, real quick. Apparently, the Suicide Squad is very good. Yes, I keep I had, reading I, I, the I saw, reviews. I saw, I saw a like... couple of like really, really positive reviews. I'm like, is that coming out? <laughs> That was my main reaction. It's coming in August, so I'm like, I'm very excited. Oh god! No, for you, it's coming on the 30th of July because uh, the oh, UK. Oh jeez! Will... Like you're almost here. It's almost here because the UK get it a, a week earlier than any, any, anybody else. So I'm like, I'm That's very happy. I'm very happy. I'm not gonna lie. I I cannot wait to watch it because first of all, I love James Bond. Uh, so I figured that it's gonna be like everything that they are basically writing about it at the moment and now i am even more excited to watch it uh even if you know obviously the first suicide squad was like a letdown but uh i, I just didn't end up watching it like i remember being really excited it's... about that movie yeah. and then it was like all the reviews were bad and i just never watched you're better it. off you're better off without it trust me if they ever do like a director's a cut thing, mm. i am interested maybe. in that maybe Maybe like, the Snyder Cut happened, so why not? Um, I am also very excited. I will just quickly go through this on Netflix. Uh, the last season of Lost in Space is coming out this year, so I am. I just I. Are they, that, that's my trailer. I am. I can't wait for my trailer. Are they only doing? It's like the Three third season. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tight. I like it. I like it good. I like it too, but also I really like this show. Like I don't know, it just grew on me a lot. So I'm like, yeah, but my, I think, my, I think my, my parents both watch um, Lost in Space. Aww. It's one of those ones I associate with my father. So I, I really, I really like Lost in Space. So I'm like, I'm a bit sad that it's gonna end, but uh, I hope they get a good ending. Um, please. Uh, and uh, also on Netflix, uh, the other thing that is exciting and it's gonna come out is the Ryan Reynolds and uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie. That should come out at the at November or something like that. Is I feel like I I saw him post a picture about that and yeah, I I don't, I don't know. know anything about it. I, I only know that I like Ryan Reynolds and that's all I need it's to true. know. So. I got a a thing on my time hop the other day. Um, that was my reaction. To, did you ever watch Buried? Yes. I, I was so angry at the end of that movie. I know. <laughs> 
I think we all were. Let's be fair. <laughs> like I was watching it. Like I was just want to watch Ryan Reynolds for a couple hours. Like I like I like a, like a one room like mm. interesting um, bottle episode type sort of thing. And I was like, this is really cool. And then at the end of it, I was like, what? What do you mean? Yep. After all of that. Yep. I know. I'm trying not to spoil it, but like. I yeah. mean, it came out a long time ago, so it did. You can't spoil it, to be fair. He died. He it, fucking died. He did. It was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me. What? It was really disappointing. I was like, come on. I know. Uh, talking of Ryan Reynolds, Free Guy uh-huh. is coming out as well. So. Yeah, I really don't know how I feel about this movie. Why? Because it could be good, but it also looks like it could be terrible. Of course. But it's Taika Waititi and Ryan Reynolds, so I don't. Yeah, care. I know, but it's like it's it's riding that line of like. It's either going to okay. be fucking amazing or really. Bad. Yeah, it's or it's going to be like really sort of like. <laughs> or, or just disappointing, which is even yeah, worse, that's I think. The, hence the oh. Yeah, we'll see. I tr- I I honestly trust Ryan and and Taika, so I'm I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. It's, it's all and then and you know then we we still have we still have Shang Chi we still have the Eternals which is my most anticipated we still have Spider Man for this year we still I have mean... uh, What If and mm-hmm. we still have Hawkeye which became a lot more interesting that's me saying it without spoiling it for you so I'm like hmm. um, yes I can't say anything else because I would spoil something for you. So I'm like, all right, no mm-hmm. shit. Okay. Yep. Um, but anyway, so there are there are still. Some I mean, yes, good there's things. things to be excited about. It's just I just suddenly realized, like, oh, the sort of stuff that I was really looking forward to, it's mostly come out now. Um, uh, which season two doesn't come out to December, so I got to wait a really long time for that one. Open minds. Not fine. <laughs> Did I make a face? Yes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Something is Open coming minds. out in December as well. Wait, wait, there's, I mean, Spider Man's coming out in December. I know, but... I know, I know that one. But I think it's. I don't know one. It's going to come to me once we finish recording. I'm 100% sure of it. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, altogether, we didn't talk too much about We didn't actually talk about Loki that much. <laughs> uh, uh, but yes, because. Uh, Show we... good. It's, yes, uh, I uh, we already mentioned our favorite scenes. Like you know, uh, I, I think previous. Ah oh, man, you know what? Like... I haven't spoken about this properly. Actually, the scene okay. where they're fighting, like you lit. There was like he cried so hard you can literally see like a tear. Yeah. Like he's not even facing the camera. You could see it fall off his face. I'm like, this dude's so fucking good at this. <laughs> he he just said that uh, you know if if it's up to him, he's gonna play Loki till. Yeah, Indeed, I would also I... recommend mm-hmm. to people if they're curious, uh, they did a, a Q and A. Tum- Tumblr does this thing every once in a while where they get people and they do like proper Q and As, and they called it Tumblr, which I yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it and I hate it in like At equal measure. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but he did a bunch of really nice little, um, mm-hmm. little answers, and he 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 said himself he was like, yeah, I do this forever. I love this. <laughs> I'm like, and good. it shows. It shows. Yeah. Like, come on, he's lucky. Show good. Give Loki more substance. I'm now and stuff to me to dig into and pick apart yes. with my little fingers. Yes, I also told you that he's not gonna die, so I was right. Yeah, well. you were right. I'm very, I'm very, I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I very know. relieved. To be fair, me too. Like I love this man. He's awesome, and uh, I am sure he's. We, we're gonna see a lot more of Loki in the future MCU for that. I, I don't think it's it's just gonna be the TV show. I'm I'm on that opinion. Like my hope is that with the season two that's gonna come out is that um as opposed to just having him just sort of forgive yes. like really easily. Um which I, I worry is a thing especially it's like it's a thing that I would be I'd understand but I hope that they explore it in an interesting way because like when you care about somebody that much for the first time and it's like somebody that isn't your family you are very quick to like i'm just gonna forgive everything because i don't want to ruin like a friendship thing that's that kind of like relationship you know what i mean you know if you, when you kind of go oh i like this person a lot i don't want to fuck this up by like coming in and like you 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 hurt me in a particular way but if i talk about it it might break things that kind of thing Oh no, that would be very weird. Like, right, I, like, I, 
I, I honestly think that uh, that one scene when he arrives back to the TVA and they close up on his face, I think that sealed it on for for him. I don't it's think like... he. I don't think he's done. I think it's going to be complicated, and, and and I think it's going to allow for a really interesting sort of like, okay, you screwed me over, but like I've obviously st- you can't just get rid of feelings of care for another person, right? You can't shut that off. With That's Loki? not. Like, no, no, with anybody, because this is the whole point. He he cares. He like he says that he like like no matter what he says, he will lie about it. He might be like, no, nah, I'm done, but like he'll still give a shit, and he, it will still come out in like pettiness and there you go, pettiness. Right. Um, it'll some it like he's not gonna he's he doesn't he won't let go that easily. I don't think. And I think it will be an interesting place to be able to explore that. You know, like, oh, this person, I, the, like, you go, first half of the scene, you're like, I care about this person. This person is also a version of me. Um, it's a very strange, complicated thing. Um, now this person has hurt me and actively, like, betrayed me. Um, how do we explore that in a way that is interesting and complicated and just messy, right? What I say is that if they make it any weirder, I'm out. Like not on the on the storyline stuff, and because I love I love that weird. I don't like the weird relationship. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I said it a million times. I fucking hate that. Like I don't think it'll go any further than what we saw. I truly in terms hope of so. that. I I, I really hope don't because so. like even even watching that I was like this and I and like I said I don't think I expressed this properly here before. Um, like I, I really did read that scene as somebody who was just going, "Hey, I give a shit about you, and I don't think you should do this." And she was like, "Oh, you give a shit about me? I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna express it in this particular way as a manipulation. Um, it'll be it, it, to me that that scene had absolutely no romantic or 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 I guess sexual charge to it at all. That just felt like this is an expression of." like a feeling and we don't really know how to express that feeling in any way um other than it was like hey i feel, care about it like I, I this is i was the person i was talking to last night about this whole, whole thing uh, about bucky and everything as well it was like um the two characters being like hey i care about you hey i care about you too um but i don't know what that means and then it was like narrator the feeling was friendship they were friends <laughs> and it's like i just it was it, it, the two of them were so completely devoid of contact with people that they're like, "Hey, I care about you, and I don't know what this feeling is. I like, get maybe it's romantic." And it's like, "No, no, you just you just friends. It's, this is friendship that you're feeling. Friendship is very potent and and beautiful and mm-hmm. um and it's deep care. It's friendship. You don't need to do go any further because like I the moment it happened, I was like, "Yeah, no, there's nothing about this that's actually this isn't a romantic scene." No, 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 definitely. No, no, definitely not. But it it still just feels fucking wrong. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it doesn't. It's like, huh? I literally like I never do this. I I am like, even if I'm alone and watching something completely alone, I don't like to disturb myself. <laughs> it <laughs> makes sense. I hate disturbing others with my <gasps> and, and things like that. So I see I that's try. why I like watching things alone because then I can like react. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. And, but even even though I'm on myself, I'm like, oh no, I'm trying it's it's my brother's fault. I'm gonna blame it on him because he, he always you know, he, he always has to mention like you cry too loud or you breathe it too loud and I'm like I'm sorry I exist and react to things <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, but I literally like that scene came up and I was like Ew <laughs> You did that, I went, huh <laughs> I see I, we've gone in this direction then. Oh god. As I said, I you know, last time I'm gonna say it. Fucking sibling relationship. I would have been so much happy because someone brought up that it's uh you know that change my mind thing. Uh where the guy sits at the table and you know it, it says something yeah. that changed my mind. And someone wrote it that if the Loki variant would have been a guy version of Loki again, uh then people wouldn't complain about their romantic relationship. And it's not that, like, it's not about... It, do you, I actually have a different thing. If he was a guy, there wouldn't have been anything like that. There would have been no sense, because they wouldn't, they just, they wouldn't have done it. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, <laughs> obviously, they wouldn't have done it, like, come They just on. wouldn't have done it, and it's they... like, 
oh so this is where we're at <laughs> yeah i agree i but but what i what i was saying that it even if it was a guy i would still be the same is because i am keep saying that they are nothing alike and that they are two lokis like sure they have different personalities but there's a reason why they can connect to each other this way because at the end of the day they had very similar experiences like as even as they say the stories uh the different lucky variants uh, you know tell their stories in um in episode five you can see that they are very, they have very similar pets like very very similar like they are just like nuance things that are different uh from the loki we know like especially richard the grant uh who's the best uh classic loki who who is, is describing the end game scene but he just did it differently and he the way it should have happened the way it should have russo's <laughs> i still believe that it was like a subtle uh maybe pointer that you know Maybe. I did, okay, I, I know I said I had no theories, but like the only real kind of theory that I like, vaguely had was somewhere near the end of this season or the next season, I think Loki's going to re slot himself into the timeline post end game. Like that's 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 the like I think I think now that the timeline's exploded, he has the freedom to be able to go back in and be like, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Go and live the life that I couldn't live before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. that's. I think. I think that's his happy ending as yep. well. Like he gets to just like live uh, a life beyond uh, bullshit. <laughs> yep. yep. Kill. See, yep. it's, it's just it's so fucking dumb. I still can't get over it. <sighs> it is what it is. It was. It is. It was a good show. I'm not gonna a say. dagger is no match for a Loki's magic. He's like, yeah, yeah, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony and, and what's the I, what's the other Russo's name? I can't remember. Uh oh god. Oh god, it slipped from me. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other one? <laughs> oh god! No! I always know their names. Anthony oh. and the other one is Shit. Joseph! Thank you, Google. Oh god damn it. Anthony and Joe Russo, of course. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Uh, yeah. Shit. Sirs. Stupid. Uh, Silencio Bruno. Have you watched Luca yet? No. Ah! <laughs> Why? Silencio because Bruno. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I've been very busy for the last two weeks. <laughs> anyway, this was a very special episode for me. Talked about Loki and many other things. We talked about Loki a bit, and then we talked about everything around Loki. <laughs> I mean, they all connect. Maybe not never have I ever and other things, but you everything know. is connected. Everything Nothing is, is connected. also correct. We're connected. There you go. Yeah, that was a really good show. Mm -hmm. uh, we do like Loki a lot. Uh, I'm not going to go by any Marvel thing without criticism, as you could see in. Yeah, I think well. that's fair about everything, though. Exactly. I don't think I've watched yeah. anything that and not had like a like even the smallest criticism about it, right? Um, I think it's just being able to manage that criticism in a way that that means that you still enjoy the thing and you don't talk yourself out of liking the thing. I had a, I had a, again conversation about this the other day where it was just sort of like I'm still trying to get to a place where I can see other people's criticisms about a thing. Um, mirror like some like initial reactions that I have to something and not have that then completely ruin my experience of the thing that I enjoyed before that point right because um, sometimes you see discourse or criticism about something and it, it, it gets in your head like doubt and then suddenly it's just like oh now I can't enjoy this thing as much because I can see the thing that's like bad about it um yeah. Yeah, I was still, I, you know, I'm still getting to a place where I can do both, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, it, read, read, read your media like with with nuance and and that that's that's the takeaway from this, nuance. Yes, yes, I believe so as well. Like you know, just because I said that there were things I didn't like, it doesn't mean that I don't like it as a whole. Like that's that's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and that that was us. And uh, on Tuesday we are coming. With Mr. Jeffrey Pierce, which is very exciting, because he literally we were supposed to interview him yesterday, yesterday. which was Thursday, um, 
and uh, he messaged me if we can push it to Monday because uh, a press junket is coming out and he wants to wait for that and I was like oh yeah like you know I will talk to Katie I messaged you blah 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 we did it I was like say uh, chill <laughs> yeah and we were like yeah sure sure yeah Monday is fine <laughs> and then it came out because Jeff appears it's going to be in the Last of Us TV series. And, and we won't gonna... talk about it too much right now because we're going to talk to yes. him properly on Monday. Yes, And it'll be out plan. on Tuesday. That's the plan. Hopefully he can share things. I don't think he's going to be able to tell us very much about it. But like, I, I, and I said this Definitely to you, not. I was like, we'll just be like, so you're in the Last of Us show now. Can you tell us anything about it? No, not really. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Neat. Great. <laughs> well, you're going Good to chat. Hear, you're gonna hear a lot about his books though. So Yes. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, if you haven't read or listened to either of, of, of Jeffrey's books in the Reckoning series you absolutely should because yes. I'm going to ask him specific questions about the plot yeah. 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 It's, it's really good it's really good and the audiobooks are excellent I listened like um, I, I was having trouble finding the time to actually sit down and read through them properly so I, I got the audiobooks on Audible and um, mm -hmm. they were excellent I really enjoyed being able to I listen to in the car on my way to work pretty much every day and on the way back with the occasional like I'd be too tired and it would start sending me to sleep because it was like just really nice listening to people talk yeah and I was like ah, I gotta put some music on it's gonna keep wait keep me awake but like it was yeah I, I got through the whole thing and I'm really excited for for book three whenever that oh my god yes out. yes yes it's gonna be oh it's an exciting journey uh but that was us hope you enjoyed Yes, as always, and uh, oh, don't forget episode. to subscribe, yeah. like, share, leave, uh, comments. leave the comments. Yes, and uh, on Apple Podcast, rate us because that's how we're gonna get up. There's uh, also that thing of like pushing the bell to make sure you get notified when we put new episodes out. That's that's a thing you should do. Oh yeah, yeah. And tell your friends about us because we're fun. We are fun. We're fun. <laughs> uh, please don't hate me because I don't like the Witcher. Thank you. <laughs> I promise I will like, watch it. God damn yeah. it! <laughs> I just, I just want you to give it a chance. Just give it, give it like, and you don't even like have to focus on him. Focus on the other things that are good about it. Fine. That are decidedly good about. It. Like I think he's good at it anyway. But if that's going to be such a contentious issue for you, focus on some of the other stuff. <laughs> Fine, I can do that. Anyway, be good and open hearts. Open hearts. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Love you all. I keep disappearing into black. I don't know how to. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>